Hi, my name is Mingzi Ho and I'm a technical solutions specialist here at Esri Canada. And the purpose of this video is to show you what a map and demographic makeup of a particular geography, and in our case it would be election boundaries, and how these characteristics may influence election behaviors and the results of the election. So I am going to start off by saying I am by no mean a political expert. I am not affiliated with any political parties. I am just a, a map nerd. And so in 2018, I was fascinated by the New Brunswick provincial election results. As I took a look at the election result map, I thought to myself, those are very interesting grouping of winning political parties in a particular area in New Brunswick. So it, it got me looking deeper into the election results and also taking a look at a smaller geography of how voters may cast their votes and who they vote for. So I looked at a smaller geography of polling districts. So these are boundaries of, or boundaries of area where people would go to one particular polling station and cast their votes. So within that smaller geography, I took a look at their unemployment rate. I took a, their, a look at their income level, the age within that boundary, like the range of their age, and saw really interesting um, voting behaviors that might correlate to the election results. So in the next couple of videos, we'll be going over that. Um, for now, let's take a look at this election result map. So here we have a visualization summarizing the New Brunswick election of 2018 and we can see that each of these color represent the winning party of that electoral boundary. So we have reds being uh, liberal wins, blue being progressive conservative wins, purple is the people's alliance win, and green being the green party wins. So we can see at a glance that north of New Brunswick are made out of liberal voters and majority of the southern New Brunswick area are progressive conservative um, voters. Now if we take a look at the numbers, so here we have the charts showing the seats won by the political party, we can see that progressive conservative and liberals had a tight race and where progressive conservative won by one seat, making a minority government. And if we take a look at the popular votes, so kind of the total votes the entire province made, we can see the liberals actually won by almost 20,000 votes. So that's very interesting. It kind of shows you how tight that race was between the progressive conservative and the liberal parties. So, you know, there's a couple of things that might have played a role um, in terms of votes. Let's take a deeper look. Um, so another thing that was done to this map was that um, the transparency level or the concentration of that political party color on the map was determined by how confident the wind was. So let's take a look here. We are looking at this region where the People's Alliance actually won majority of the votes within this boundary over the progressive conservative but if we take a look at the lighter purple here or the less concentrated purple we can see the votes were split up and it was a close race between the PC government and the People's Alliance. What's interesting though is also up north here where the votes was kind of split between the three parties so something interesting is going on and we'll take a look at it by looking at the employment rate. So remember how I mentioned a um, majority of the liberal voters live north of New Brunswick. Here we can see a darker shade of brown representing higher unemployment rate. That is majority, um, majority of the north in New Brunswick. So that's interesting, right? Um, we will also look at the income and see how income played a role as well as the age group and just from a glance we can see that baby boomers make up majority of the voters within New Brunswick. Uh, and lastly we'll end off this video series with predicting for the next election which is coming up in a couple days actually because something interesting happened which is in August of 2020 so now during a pandemic 
the New Brunswick government called the PC party called for an election, a snap election to be taken place in September. So we'll just play a little kind of um, prediction at some build a model to see with these demographic data that we'll be discussing about and how that might predict the election results of uh, New Brunswick in 2020. So stay tuned. <laughs> 